This video is intended to help you get up and running with the TradeStation API. We will walk you through the process of authenticating with the TradeStation API. If you're new to APIs, don't worry, we will break it down step by step, although previous experience with programming is helpful. All API calls, also known as requests, require an access token. Access tokens, commonly referred to as bearer tokens, are temporary credentials that grant API access for up to 20 minutes. This token should not be confused with your API key or your API secret. Your API key is commonly referred to as your client ID. For this video, we'll be using a program called Postman, a popular API testing tool that simplifies sending requests and inspecting responses. This versatile tool provides a user-friendly interface to interact with APIs without having to write code. It is recommended for gaining familiarity with the API. One notable feature is its code snippets that demonstrate how to make requests in various programming languages. These snippets can simplify the transition from testing to integration. Before we continue, please pause this video and install Postman or a software with similar capabilities. Once you're set up, Resume the video and we'll dive right in. Step one, build in the sign-in URL to get an authorization code. TradeStation's API is designed with security in mind. This means that there is an authentication process that requires users to sign in with their username before they can start using the API. Since access tokens expire every 20 minutes, requiring users to sign in repeatedly would be impractical. To address this, after completing the authentication process, TradeStation provides a long-lived refresh token that allows you to programmatically generate new access tokens when needed. The first step in the authentication process is building a properly formatted sign-in URL that includes your API key, also called your client ID. The API documentation has an example of this sign-in URL. It is crucial to ensure the URL is precisely formatted as even a slight misconfiguration in its construction can lead to issues. Let's copy the example from the documentation. When setting up this URL, you must specify a redirect URI. This is the destination where the user, you, will be sent after successfully signing in. The redirect URI, also called a callback URL, must be registered with your API key. By default, the following redirect URIs are allowed. Additional callback URLs can be added to your API key if needed by contacting client experience. It is best to include all available scopes in the sign-in URL from the beginning. Scopes define the level of access your application is requesting, and missing a required scope may cause issues later when making API calls. One critical scope to include is offline access which allows you to receive a refresh token. This refresh token enables long-term use of the API without the need to repeatedly sign in. It is important to note that refresh token alone cannot be used to make API requests. It can only be used to generate new access tokens. Each component of the URL was separated into a new line for clarity in the documentation. We'll need to remove the new lines, but first, we need to replace the client ID with our own. This is your API key. For this example, we'll use localhost 8080 as the redirect URI or the callback URL. Note that the example has HTTPS, but we're using HTTP for the local host. Now we will remove the new lines. Step two, using the authorization code. Before using the sign-in URL, we'll construct a request in Postman and use the authorization code. Upon successfully signing in, we will be redirected to the URL provided, in this case, localhost 8080, which will include an authorization code. One of Postman's powerful features is its ability to build requests from curl, a command line tool widely used for making network requests. Since the documentation provides curl examples, we can import and work with them in Postman. Let's copy the curl example from the documentation to exchange the authorization code and modify it to suit our needs. Modify the client ID, secret, and redirect URI. 
It's important for the redirect URI to exactly match the one used in the sign in URL. Import this into Postman. There are different methods that can be used when making HTTP requests, such as get and post. From our curl request we imported, Postman knows this is a post request and automatically adds the headers we need and includes the body where we will replace the authorization code. Now that we have our request configured, we can open the sign in URL in our browser. You will be prompted to sign into your TradeStation account. After signing in, we can copy the code from the local host page we're redirected to. Because we have no local host server actively running, we can expect to see a message similar to this site can't be reached. Despite this error, the authorization code that appears in the URL is still valid and can be manually copied for use in our Postman request. While we could begin making API requests with the access token displayed in the response, the documentation contains a curl example of how to use the long-lived refresh token to generate access tokens. Let's copy this request and modify it to suit our needs. Copy the refresh token and let's learn how to generate new access tokens. Remember to also change the client ID and client secret in the code snippet along with the refresh token. Import the code into Postman. and review the fields in the body section are correct. Click send, and that will generate a new access token. Each time we make this request in Postman, we will get a new access token. It is, however, considered a best practice to use the same access token for API requests until the access token is near expiration or has expired and only then get a new access token. In other words, you should not get a new access token before each API requests. You log in once, and then you use the refresh token to continuously generate new access tokens when needed. Step three, making an API request. Now that we know how to get access tokens, let's make an API request. When working with the API, you can switch between the simulated and live environment by simply changing the base URL of your request. Let's copy the get accounts example from documentation and change the base URL to use a simulated environment. When making this request, we will need to provide the access token we previously generated as part of the authorization header. Please note that the word bearer is required, followed by a space and then our access token. Now, modify the base URL to access the simulated environment. If we make the request, we should see our simulated accounts. After you're done, you can see this request in various programming languages by clicking the Code Snippet button. To wrap up, understanding the TradeStation API's authentication process is key to using the API effectively. By learning how to create a sign-in URL, handle access and refresh tokens, and make API requests, you'll be well prepared to integrate confidently and make the most of the API.